y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed in. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Oh. Um. How did you? Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know. We don't have Wi-Fi anymore. I don't. I don't understand that. I know the concept. <laughs> I know. Like on purpose? I gotta have no. I have to get like this big, humongous, like satellite on top of my house, and I don't want to do that. So I've just been using like hotspots. We need you to get the satellite. How do you watch TV or like? We have regular. You just hook up to your hotspot. It's been working fine, but I guess sometimes it drops. I know it's real. <laughs> that is, you are. You're being real ghetto. Right now. <laughs> being real country. You being real ghetto. <laughs> Real country. But we have regular, um, like, satellite cable. So I don't have to watch TV on Wi-Fi. Go watch regular TV if I watch TV. Anyways. So I'm going to go by memory because I have great. Well, I did take my Gainesville Bonobo today, so maybe Let's I can see. help. So we're going to UK first, and we're going to talk about Nicola Bewley. She is a 45-year-old mom of two. Um, in my article, it says mom of two because we're mom, in the UK. That's what they say. So she, on January 27th, she takes her kids to school. And then her routine is to take her dog, named Willow, to the park, and they go for a walk. Oh. And this is like a nice, it's almost like a two-level park. It's not really two levels, but it's like there's a higher level and a lower level. And the, on the lower level, there's this river. I don't know what the river's called. So she's walking, and she's seen by people that walk there every morning. So she waves at different people. Um, At 8.40, at 9 o'clock, she calls her boss or sends her boss an email. Mm -hmm. And then she logs on to a Teams call. Okay. okay. I did that a lot. And she was walking while she was on this team's call. And she didn't really have to be involved in it. So she had her camera off and her sound off, but she was just listening. Yeah. She was last seen walking by the river near the bench with her dog. At 930, somebody discovered her dog with no harness and her cell phone on the bench still logged into the team's call. Okay. Or this was 9.50. At 9.30, the team's call was over with. Sorry if my timeline's off because I'm going by memory. But around that time, the team's call was over with, and she never logged out. So she was still on there, but nobody else was on there. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, it mm-hmm. just didn't mm-hmm. shut down. Yeah. Um, And so willow was just right there with the harness off and so there's the river there's the bench there's the walking path behind the bench and then there's the dog and there's her phone so she was finally reported missing and um so police searched every like they got drones they got helicopters so now it's january 28th police searched dogs they were all over that little park and walking area and the river and everything and they didn't find, like, not a trace of Nicola. Volunteers, like, there were, like, 100 locals that were all there to, like, help search and whatever. Because this is, in this area, there's never anything like this. And so it's big deal right now. This is, like, yeah. Gabby Petito in the UK because things like this never happen. Like, it's a big deal. So, um Now, officers do say that that river is extremely dangerous. So they're wondering, could she have fallen to the river? Oh, she just threw her phone and landed on the bench and still on the team's call? And then took off her dog's harness. Yeah. And then got in there. So um, on January 29th, no, 30th, people, the police say that they... Their working hypothesis is that she either fell into the river 
Or she might have walked in to commit suicide, just like walked in the way river and drowned herself, which that, that just what? doesn't happen. No. You don't walk in the river to drown yourself. You like jump off a bridge maybe <laughs> into the river to drown yourself. But yeah. so her family is like, um, I'm pretty sure police don't make decisions off of a hypothesis like you should keep an open mind so now they're in the news and they're like everybody please keep an open mind this is there's no like logical evidence that she is in the river or that she would have committed suicide and supposedly it's a very muddy area right there between the bench and the river so you would have been able to see foot tracks or if she slipped like slide Uh, tracks or something and it was untouched so, family's like, I'm not with this right now. Mm-mm. And so, police are like, yeah, we kind of think she's in the river. So, this team, mm, it's kind of like our adventures with a purpose. <laughs> yeah, They're called something else. I'll say it if I find it. Um, but that's what they are in the UK. They volunteer to come and dive this river. And it's just like a long, like, narrow river like the Guadalupe or like our Brazos River here. Mm -hmm. And um, they were going to use sonar to see if they can detect anything. They dived and looked, searched for days. Five miles down from the bench where she would have gone in the water on each side and then on the edges and then deep down in the middle. And they found nothing. Nothing. So... um. By February 6th. Monday. That was... No, on February 6th, they begin their search. On February 8th, they called off their search. So they searched the 6th, the 7th, and then later on the 8th, they called off their search and just said that they... um, This is the Specialist Group International. That's what the the team is called. Okay. They said that... um, they don't think that she is in the water. And if she is, she if if she is, she's way further down. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So the leader of this group, Peter Falding, did say that he thinks that Nicole's phone on that bench is a decoy to lead people to the river when she's really maybe not in the river. And you know what I thought of? Sherry Pepini, when she just like oh, placed hey. her phone in a piece of her hair. Yes. You know, I'm up not, her yeah. I'm not saying Nicola is, is, is a Pepini, but that was a decoy. So this could also be a decoy. Would have just let, okay, like if you're just going to leave your dog there. I know, but <clears throat> I knew you're going to say that, but she's also leaving her kids. So that's probably, it's probably easier to leave your dog than your kids. I would, somebody with kids would say. (laughs) Caroline would not. (laughs) Caroline would be, the kids are fine. Let me just take Parker. Jack will, Jacks will be fine. Let me take Parker. Yeah, like, but the kids, like, at least, uh, she, where's the baby Yeah, she's got a husband. We're going to get there. Oh. (coughs) Look at us both. (laughs) (laughs) We might need some Ricola. So, um, there is, all the, in- the exits, most of the exits to this park are have a camera. So they looked on all the exits. There's no evidence of her leaving. But there is one trail that does not have a camera. So they're thinking, could she have gone down this trail? So they're searching this trail. And then across the river, this very skinny, narrow river, is an abandoned house. So the family is saying... Have you searched the house? Have you searched all these like different bathrooms that are around here? Like, have they really searched? Because they're going off that she's committed suicide and she's in the water. So are they really searching with an open mind? I would have searched the abandoned house. Yeah. So <clears throat> I've read two things. I read one thing saying that they have not searched the abandoned house yet because they think she's in the water. And I read another thing that, s- the house. that said that um, the owner, even though it's abandoned, it's still owned by somebody, would not give them permission to go in the house. But the owner said that they would check the house oh, for them. Okay. So the police stood outside 
while they checked the house and the owner came back and said, nope, she's not in here. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. So police are like, <clears throat> okay, let's go to Duncan. <laughs> Do they have Duncan in the UK? <laughs> <clears throat> so that's really where we're at. Um, right now, everybody, the family, the husband are like, it feels like she has literally disappeared she's because she was seen at 19. She was seen at 910 and by 930 she was gone. And a lot can happen in 20 minutes. Right. Could she have swept? I don't I don't know what could have happened. Now, of course, nosy reporters interview the husband oh, well, because yeah. that's where you go. Right. And um, there was a panel that kind of um, human behavior and mm-hmm. um, kind of like they did Casey Anthony. The behavior panel. Yeah. Behavior panel. Yeah. Four of them, yeah, and all of them, s- three of them agreed that husband did not seem suspect mm-hmm. at all. Like that he seemed very genuine, but more like stumped. Like if he had a loss for words, it's because he is stumped and like he's not sure where to go with this. Mm-hmm. And um, one of them did say, <clears throat> it's weird that he didn't plead for his wife. Like, bring my wife home. I hope she's okay. Like, he just kind of just was f- kind of flatlined about it. Uh-huh. He gave me a little bit of Chris Watts vibe because Chris Watts would kind of, like, smile or, like, chuckle through it. Like, it would be, like, a nervous chuckle like you do, uh-huh. Uh-huh. right? Um, but, no, he is kind of getting ridiculed, but people don't really think that he has anything to do with it as of now. So then the only other person to think about would be the woman who said heard their dogs played together for a little bit on the walking path. And that's the last that she saw her. So could that woman that was the last person to see him, her, have done something else? What was the husband's alibi? Or where was he? He's got an air type alibi, I think, at work. Like, cause she would get up, she worked from home, I think. So she would get up, go to the park and then go home and go to work. And he was already at work. This was like nine 30. So after why nine. are they questioning him? No, all they did was interview. Just like they do husbands, yeah. you know, when their wife is missing. Um, I'm going to need them to go inside the abandoned house. I know. What and is- please report back to that and check all the bathrooms and porta potties and whatever oh. else. And they don't even get a warrant to go. I, I don't know how that works. Oh, no, you're not allowed to come into my house. I thought they could just can bust in. Mm-mm, <laughs> you got to have a warrant. Um, you got to have permission or a warrant. So, okay, we'll follow that because strange. we'll just see. And I love it. I love it. They were saying that like homicides don't happen. And what doesn't happen a lot over there is husbands killing their wives. Maybe it's starting. Maybe this is the Maybe one. This is it. So there's Nicola. We will follow wow. that. Nicola, what's her? Bully, B U L L E Y. And then um, we talked about her a little bit last week, a little bit. Um, Lindsay Clancy. Oh, yes. They had her hearing. I watched it. Yes. I watched I did the too. whole thing. Okay, so. What? Now, a word from our sponsors. Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially golden age stuff oh golden age stuff is always the best and we will make sure to 
highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about Hi, this is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers. And we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music. And we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine, wine and vinyl. vinyl. So check us out on RogueMediaNetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. (laughs) Welcome to One Star Rewind a new podcast about those dreaded one-star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one-star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. So what we know is on Tuesday, January 24th, Lindsay Clancy had three kids, okay? She got up. She was at home with them. This was in um, near the, is it Massachusetts? Yeah, Massachusetts. Boston, Plymouth, Duxbury area. Massachusetts. Yes, Massachusetts. So Tuesday, January 24th, she takes her kids to the doctor and um, runs a couple errands, goes home. The kids go outside. They play in the snow. They build a snowman. They have a normal day. Um, that evening, oh, Lindsay texted um, pictures to her husband or to her mom and to her husband of the kids building a snowman outside. Mm-hmm. So then um, later that evening, she texts her husband and asks her husband to go by CVS and pick up some kids, the kids' prescriptions and to go pick up some food at a place that they've eaten at before, but it's kind of like far, like out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he was like, okay, well, I guess she's got a craving. I'll grab it. He, when he gets home with the food and the and these prescription. And like, like, Yes. Like- Babies. They're all like stay at home mom age. Yeah. Like four, three, and, the and one zero. Is like really, baby. Yeah, he's like zero years old. Yeah, zero. So, uh, oh, it's five year old daughter, Cora, three year old son, Dawson, and eight month old baby, Callan. <clears throat> when he walks in the house, he walks in and nobody's there. He goes upstairs, looks for his wife. The door to the bedroom is locked. He gets in. He sees blood on the mirror. The window is open. He hears her moaning. He looks out the window. She has jumped from the second Mm story-ish. He runs down there. She's in a lot of pain. She's really hurt. She calls. He calls 911. He goes, what happened? She says, I tried to kill myself. Yeah. Do people even say that? People are like, 
I wanted it to end. There was so much pain or I just, I just wanted to die. Like it just sounded weird to me that she said, I tried to kill myself. So she's on the phone with 911. And then he's like, wait, where are the kids? Yeah. I think she did slit her wrist and that's why there's blood. She slit her wrist and jumped and jumped from the window. So then she's like, he's like, he says, where are the kids? And so she goes, they're in the basement. So he's still in the 911 call, uh-huh. goes down to the uh-huh. basement, yes. and all you hear, I don't think, have they played it yet? I haven't I don't, heard the tape. I just heard what they said at the hearing. What they said is all you hear is shrieks, crying, screaming, because he sees his three kids, and she has strangled them with, like, resistance bands, exercise ropes with the handle, like, those little rubbery ones that you work yes. out with. Um, all three of them. And they all appear to be dead. We later on know that Callan was not dead. And he didn't die. He died a couple That's days the, later. The baby. The baby. The baby oh. died later. Now, we also know that mama didn't die. So bitch is in the hospital. And she is now paralyzed. Like she's a paraplegic. Show sure is. And so at the hearing that they had, (coughs) they said that she has actually Googled, she actually Googled the distance and the time it takes to get from the restaurant to her house because she wanted to know how much time she had. And that um, she journaled every thing that they did day by day her and the kids journaled her medicine and that the journaling was very neat meticulous and articulate and so the prosecution is saying that this was premeditated and planned and she was in her right mind yes because she did all those she yes yes now the defense has another story they're saying she was on tons of different um, drugs mm-hmm. that um, were inconsistent. That the doctors kept taking her on, putting her on, taking her off, and switching it up or whatever. That she was hospitalized January first through fifth for suicidal thoughts, and that they were treating her for postpartum. She already had generalized anxiety disorder. And that they were treating her for postpartum. But wh- I don't. I, whenever I heard all of that, I just like, well, why didn't they just tell us that? They just, it's like two totally different stories. I felt like from both sides. Well, and that what the prosecution and the defense usually does. Well, but they they were saying like she has no history of anything. She wasn't on any. She didn't ever talk about suicide. Oh. She wasn't. I mean, it just mm-hmm. seemed like it was like. Then they totally contradicted it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Well, so what is it? Did she or did she not? What? Maybe it. Maybe the defense had evidence. The prosecution did not. I guess. Um, but I think they're just not buying it, so they don't want the people to buy it. Because what I read somewhere else was that she was on twelve different medications. Yes, that can't work for you. I there's no. She was also a nurse. And all these things flag. are Klonopin, Valium, Prozac, Ambien, uh, Seroquel, Ramiron, Trazodone. Like, you yes. don't take all of this stuff at one time. Yeah. Unless she was stealing it from somewhere and she was just, like, because I think they're going to go with whoever diagnosed her. Like, who no, I don't. They're already who, talking to the, the doctor. Pro- There's no, I, I'm no doctor, but I do not see how one doctor approves some person to take all these at the same time. No, I, th- I think that they were um, working with this. Like if you try one med, but you have a certain reaction, so you get off that, but you try another one, right? But it still could be in your system because you're going to pick up the next pr- the other prescription. So I think they were playing with meds, trying to find a good little concoction. But they also said that the doctor never told husband or never told anybody to like they did Andrea Yates they told Rusty Yates not to be alone with the kids like that Andrea couldn't be alone with the kids they never said anything like that about 
Lindsay to the husband so he felt fine going to work. Well, plus, wouldn't he notice if she was acting? He said that she's had a good couple of days. Couple which, of days? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to need you to these have were, a good couple of years. These were some of her, her best days. And so oh, he is no. also um, kind of shocked at this. She's pretty sure he's just de- devastated and numb. So um, I think she was ordered to kind of stay in her little rehabilitation area. She can't do anything. She can't go out on bail and try to go away or leave the country or anything. So I think she's going to stay in the hospital, rehabilitate, and then they'll talk about the trial later on. Well, let me read you what I found uh, that she had posted on Facebook in May, on May 5th, 2021. Okay. Hello, lovely. Pa- it's like some um, attachment parenting for, for littles page. I don't know. Hello, lovely parents. I'm looking for some advice, solidarity, ideas, something anything. I'm truly finding my 19 month old to be the most difficult human I've ever encountered. I mean that with all the love in my heart, but I honestly cannot make it through the day without getting so frustrated with him. He's not my first child. So not to compare because I know that every child is different, but just for background, this isn't my first rodeo. Every single thing with him is a battle and it has been this way for a while since He was maybe eight months old. I really try to pick my battles and only do what's completely necessary. But I mean everything. Getting out of his crib in the morning and going downstairs, changing his diaper, getting him dressed, getting him in and out of his seat, getting him in the car seat, getting him out of the car seat, putting on his jacket and his shoes, go outside, having to come inside when it's time to go to sleep for his nap at night. He fights me every step of the way with all of these very normal daily activities. It constantly feels like I have to force him to do things, which feels so wrong, but he is always fighting me and crying about doing these very normal things. Whoop his ass. Sounds like that second board child thing is a real thing. So maybe she just was like, I'm really pissed at this one, but I'm just going to kill him. And then she had another one after this. And then in some of her journaling, she was talking about how she wants to have more kids. Yes. I don't, more kids is never the answer. No. But they did say the defense, the defense did say that her first kid, normal, no issues. Second kid, normal, no depression or whatever issues. But that sounds like they're, that wasn't very normal. But this third one is what brought it all on. I don't know. So sad, so sad, so sad. So there's that. We will follow up just to see because I'm kind of, it's kind of like the whole Andrea I mean, but what Yates. What do you think? What do you, do you think that, what do you think? Do you think she just snapped and killed her kids or do you think she's like had some kind of mental psychosis I would breakdown? need to know. I would need to know more. I would need to know, did she journal everything all the time? Like, was she that meticulous or was this like new behavior? I would need to know, um, wh- like the doctor's. Because with Andrea Yates, I do uh, remember we both were like, there was, was a crazy. lot of su- yeah. Well, we didn't know that in the beginning. We didn't know that until way afterwards. Oh. So I'm glad that they're going to let her rehabilitate so that they can investigate because I would like to know, um, supposedly she was off of work because it's been an issue, like her postpartum or whatever. Well, so I would just like to know more. She was, I just know she was sitting there from her hospital bed with that face mask on, just watching the whole thing. But so she's there. She just can't move. Mm-mm. Can you imagine waking? Okay. So if it was a psychotic break, uh, the first thing she did also was she had a whiteboard. And the first thing she did was ask if she needed a lawyer. a lawyer. Yeah. Which prosecution did say she knew what she did. But can you imagine, what if it was a psychotic break or, like, bad medicine? Like, you take some medicine that you trusted because the doctor gave it to you and you're a nurse and nurses believe in medicine. And then you wake up paralyzed and you find out you killed your kids. It's a bad bad day for you. Oh, bad worst day ever. Okay. Um, and then uh, this is my last one. This is really quick. There, we're going to post a picture of a kid that was found. He's not a kid. He's a teenager. He was found in Midland. He is a teenage boy with autism who is nonverbal. 
He was found um, on January 29th in Midland, Texas, in an alley near like this housing area, like where houses are, in an alley, right? Mm -hmm. He cannot speak to the police. He has been able to write his name, and he's wrote down the name Cardarius. He's tall. He's lanky. Oh, his picture that. has been posted everywhere, right? Now, you got a lot of sleuths and a lot of people because this is everywhere. It, they're like, what if they were passing through Midland and they're not from here, so we need this to go nationwide? 14 years ago... um, a little boy named Ajur Desir, who was autistic and nonverbal, went missing in Florida. No one has reported something. This. Went missing in Florida. And the family never found him. They never found a body. They never found out what happened to him. People think that Ajir looks like what this kid, maybe Cardarius, could have looked like as a he young looks boy. Exactly like him. As a young boy. Um and so now we're wondering if this could be this missing autistic boy. Now Ajir was Haitian. So when he was younger he couldn't speak, but he understood Haitian. So they're wondering if that's why he's not really responding to anything is because we're talking English to him and maybe he only understands Haitian, which he probably wouldn't respond. He couldn't respond verbally, but if he could write his name, could he write? Could he type? Is there a speaking device? Could he point? Could he do something? You know, um, but there's no communication and it is. What's today? February 9th, when y'all hear this, it'll be, what, the 13th? No. It'll be Caroline's birthday! That's Monday! This comes out on Tuesday. So it'll on be Valentine's? the 14th when they hear it. Okay. This. Happy birthday, Caroline! Ah! So, um, they know nothing. Not one person has come forward and said, oh, that's my son, that's my nephew, that's my grandson, that's my nobody. Not one person. Not even because I was like, oh, his teacher's coming forward. Because when you're a special ed teacher, especially somebody with special needs like this, you usually teach your, your kids for a couple years in a row. Yeah. So you almost become like a mom to these kids. I just knew a school district or a teacher or something would have came come forward and said, yeah, that's so-and-so. He goes to so-and-so high school. Not one person. So does that mean he has not been in school? And if no caretaker has come forward, does that mean he was stolen? Why do they steal? Why would they steal him? So does that mean he has never been to school? And then does as a person not coming forward mean guilty? Like that they weren't supposed to have him? Oh, like that oh, they kidnapped already, him from Florida yeah. is. So if they kidnapped him when he was a baby, then now that he's missing from the kidnappers? Or he got away. Well, how would he even know where to go? He didn't. He was walking in an alley. I know. People found him. Because if he wasn't hidden, or if he was a part of the community, a neighbor, somebody yeah, from the grocery store, somebody would have come forward and said, oh, yeah, I've seen that kid with uh, down at this corner at this house. Like, what would the use be for? Like, he. Why would you kick, kidnap an autistic kid? Is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I would have to think that it would be a family member, like, that didn't trust how maybe the caretakers were taking care of them. Or you're a oh. pedophile and you know that this, that you can probably abuse this kid and what's, oh, he can't tell just, nobody. Yeah. Oh, that's for sure. That's it. It's just real suspicious because at first they were like, oh, he probably lives with the grandma and the grandma died and he just was hungry and he was in the alley in the dumpster trying to eat or whatever. But somebody knows the grandma. So somebody would have seen him and that somebody would have already come forward. That is nuts. I know. So going to be following that one. And then I have to end with some... <laughs> what do you think about this girl that came forward on TikTok and said she's R. Kelly and Aaliyah's love child? 
Are you joking? Go to TikTok and search R. Kelly and Aaliyah's daughter. This girl has gone viral. She even sings Aaliyah's song. And she's like, I just want y'all to know that I've been holding the secret for forever. I am the child of R. Kelly and Aaliyah. And she's saying all these things to prove her. You look in the background, there's all these pictures of Aaliyah. And she's like, I just grew up, I did not grow up with my mom. And it was just been so sad that I had to keep this a secret. But I wanted to let y'all know. And I sing just like her. And then she sings. And she, she does not sound just like her. We're pretty sure she's either real crazy or real special. Oh, but no. then somebody was like, oh. bitch, that's your real mama right there. <laughs> So just if you want to, I don't know, I don't, I, I won't even say laugh because if she's no, crazy or special that you may not want to laugh at that, but it's just no, but really random and crazy. Yeah. It's gone viral. I'm surprised you hadn't seen it. Yeah. So our Kelly and Aaliyah might have a love child. Go look her up on TikTok. I'm going to have to post it. I'm going <laughs> to have to post it. I'm going to tell you why I haven't been around because, you know, I've been in the, in the, uh, trial of um the never-ending trial never-ending trial which i'll tell you about more on thursday thursday okay y'all that's all i have i hope you enjoyed the quickie love it for today and we will see y'all thursday don't forget to rate review and subscribe don't forget to stay aware stay alive and always be dtf bye y'all bye love you love your show This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.